Hello everyone, it's Paul here from Grain of Glass and today I'm going to show you the basics on how to put together a kegging system. So what you can see in front of me is a CO2 tank, CO2 regulator, CO2 tubing, which at our shop it's red, might look different depending on where you buy it from. Some uh, beer line, we use Bevlex, it's usually clear like this gas disconnect which are pretty much always gray if you're using ball lock if you're using pin lock it will be red but the bottom will be gray then same thing for your beer beer will be black and on a pin lock it'll be red and then black on the bottom so the first thing i like to do when setting up a new kegging system is attaching the co2 tubing to the regulator so you want a hose clamp i like using these they're really good quality uh, you could also use an Odecker clamp or whatever else you have that's going to seal it up real good. So get the tubing on there. This one just uses a flathead screwdriver to get on. The main thing is you want the clamp to be of good quality. Uh, we've had some from certain suppliers in the past where once you started to uh, get it tight, it would just start to skip and that's not good. It's probably not going to clamp hard enough. These you can really get them nice and tight without them skipping. That looks pretty good to me. You want to do the same thing for the disconnect on the other side. You clamp on first. Grab your gas disconnect. I always remembered uh, gas being gray. They start with the same letter. I know it's lame. And beer black. Again, same letter. Kind of lame, but hey, it... Uh, it, it made me remember what was what. And same thing, you want to make sure it's really, really tight. A lot of people, when they're setting up their first kegerator, are going to lose their whole bottle of CO2 to the atmosphere because of a loose clamp or they didn't check something. Alright, so now both of our clamps are nice and tight. We can attach the CO2 regulator to the CO2 tank. And then same thing, you want to make sure this is really tight. So grab a wrench or something like that. Make sure that's really tight. At this point, before connecting anything, you might as well check for leaks. So what I like to do is take a spray bottle. This one's filled with star sand. You could also use soapy water. You just want something that if there's a little bit of a leak, you're going to see a lot of bubbles start to happen. So we'll turn it on. Check our regulator. Okay, so we're pushing about 15 PSI right now, so that's enough that if we spray it down with our star sand solution, we should start to see some bubbles if there's a leak somewhere. So I like to start right here at the connection. That looks good. Then we'll just go down. So now this clamp here is another place that it could leak CO2 from. That looks also good. And then down to our gas disconnect. And that looks good. So now we can proceed to the next part. The next thing you'll want to do is get your beer line ready. So get your uh, beer line liquid disconnect. And you're going to want to put that into your beer line and you'll notice that well you probably can't see but uh, it's a really tight fit so what you're going to want to do or what I do anyway is uh, boil some water stick the end into the boiling water for about five seconds and then you'll be able to slip it on nice and easy I don't have access to boiling water right now so you have to use your imagination but basically five seconds put it on put a clamp clamp it really tight and then the other side, it'll depend. I mean, if you're going to a beer tower, it's probably already installed onto the shank of the beer tower. Um, if it's a first-time kit you're buying, like the ones that we sell, it'll be a picnic tap, and it'll be the same thing. Just dip it in some boiling water, put the picnic tap on, clamp it really tight, and that's it. 
so we have our CO2 tank and regulator ready. We've set up all the tubing. Now it's time to connect it up to our keg. So we've transferred the beer into our keg and now we're ready to hook it up to CO2. So the first thing I do is always take some keg lube, a little dab on your finger here, and put it around both the gas and liquid post. This just helps the disconnects go off and on easily. It will also prolong the life of the O-rings that are on here. Um, luckily they are replaceable and fairly cheap, so if they do crack, it's easy to replace. And I'll also do the same for the, the lid. There's a big O-ring on there, and same thing, a little dab on your finger. Put it all around. And this will just help the lid seal and also, again, prolong the life of that O-ring. Now, before I clamp this down, I like to hook up the gas first. The gas disconnect will always have, you probably can't see here, but there's going to be notches notched in all around it. Um, so look for that. Also, a lot of kegs it will say in. Obviously, in is for the gas. Out will be for the beer. But if it doesn't say anything, just look for those notches. Right now, I have the regulator set to about 12 to 15 psi. So we're going to hook that up, and then pull up on the lid until you stop hearing the gas escape. That means it's really sealed properly, and then you can clamp it down. If you don't hook up the gas, you just put on the, the lid and clamp it down. It's possible that it's not exactly in the right place and you'll have a slow leak of gas that'll empty your whole tank overnight without you knowing. So once that's hooked up, I'll again take my spray bottle that's with Star Sand. You can use soapy water, whatever. And I'll spray around the disconnect here. Check for leaks and then also on the keg lid. A lot of times this is where you'll get a leak and not expect it. That all looks good. So at this point there's a few different things you can do uh, to carbonate your beer. The, the best way is to hook it up at about 12 psi uh, obviously you want to put this in a fridge to keep it cold. Uh, beer at room temperature will not really carbonate. You'd have to crank up the pressure and it'll take a long time. So put this in the fridge, 12-ish PSI, let it sit for about two weeks. That'll give it time for the beer to kind of clear up and get carbonated. Now, maybe you kegged your beer on a Wednesday, you have a party on a Saturday, you need to get this thing carbonated quickly. Um, my preferred method is to get the beer cold hook it up at about 30 psi, give it about 48, you know, 60 hours, somewhere around there, back it off to 12 psi, pull the pressure relief valve, and your beer will be pretty much carbonated at that point, you know, not perfect, but close enough. The other method, which I don't really like, but it does work, is um, to hook it up at a high psi, let's call it 30, um, you know, get your beer cold first, 30 psi, hook it up, Put it on the ground and just rock that sucker. You know, back and forth, shake it up. You know, that's going to force the CO2 into solution quicker, but every time I've tried, it usually results in the beer being over carbonated, and it's a pain in the butt to get it, you know, back to normal pressure. So I'd say if you're in a hurry, 30 psi, two or three days, that'll get you where you want to go. However, you know, 12 PSI for two weeks, your beer will taste better, it'll have a more even carbonation. So now that our gas is connected, all that's left to do is to hook up the um, beverage line. So again, this isn't connected to anything because you could be going to a picnic tap, a shank through you know the sidewall of a fridge, perhaps a beer tower. There's many different ways you could do it, but the main thing is the black disconnect will go onto the uh, out side of the keg. So I'm not going to clamp this down because if I did, beer would shoot everywhere, but just imagine me clamping this down. And that's pretty much it. Your beer is kegged, it's hooked up to CO2, and it's going to be ready to drink before you know it. So there you have it. I've shown you how to get the regulator attached to your CO2 tank, how to get the tubing connected to your disconnects, and now it's just a matter of uh, waiting for your beer to carbonate, and then you can enjoy it. 
Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a thumbs up if we helped you out and remember to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to check out our next video for more tips, tricks and knowledge to take your home ring to the next level.